from being your average kid gamer to becoming the face of Dota 2. This is Dendi. Dendi was one of the best mid laners in the early 2010s, and his time with Na'Vi has been nothing short of legendary. Filled with countless iconic memories we will never forget. Now of course we know all the clips and highlights, but was Dendi actually one of the best in the game during his prime, or was it all just hype by his fans? So I dove into all of his old games with Na'Vi, and analyzed all the information I could find to paint a better picture of the player that Dendi used to be. Dendi's journey with Na'Vi began on Christmas Day in 2010, and little did they know, this signing would change the the history of Dota 2 forever. Navi's first breakout tournament was the very first international, the first ever event with over $1 million in prize money. Unfortunately, a lot of the stats from this tournament were lost to time, but from the intel that we can gather, Navi came out swinging, being the top team in their group, beating teams like Scythe Gaming and Kuroki Stack Gosu Gamers. And no, that is not the same miracle you're thinking of. Dendi would go berserk mode at this event, earning his name on the list of players with the highest kills per game, being the only mid laner to make the list. Navi would go on a terror in the playoffs, only losing one game to Ehome in the grand finals, with Dendi demonstrating a wide hero pool, including Viper, Puck, and even Enigma. Dendi as well, get a look at the hole! Black hole! Three guy guard down! Dendi would cement his name into history after catching Ehome with their pants pulled down, hitting a four man coil after taking Roshan, resulting in Navi running it down until Ehome fell to the best team in the world. Unrelated, but I thought it was interesting how the upper bracket was all best of ones until the upper bracket final, followed by the lower bracket also being all best of ones until round five. This is weird, and I'm glad we've moved past this. And now that we're on the topic of weird things, what in Gaben's name are these items? I mean, it looks like my boy got the Mario mushroom and a butt plug, huh? and it scares me that he has three of them. And then there's Beastmaster. Dude looks like he was sculpted by the gods. Dude looks like he was referenced for every Sigma male meme out there. Meanwhile, they make Lion look like the offspring of Shrek and the Dookie that he took earlier that day. 2012 was a hell of a year for Na'Vi, winning 5 tier 1 events leading up to TI. Dota's second TI showed us that even the gods can bleed, as Na'Vi took 6 losses in the group stage, which isn't too bad since they still made the upper bracket, but when you consider that IG went 13-1, followed by LGD flat out being undefeated, Dendi and Co weren't exactly the most feared team at the event. And I feel like it should be mentioned that Dendi's KDA wasn't anything too special this tournament, being only 10 spots away from his support player Puppet. But having a high KDA doesn't exactly win you tournaments, as something that separates Dendi from other mid laners is his ability to perform under pressure. I mean, without his ability to stay calm in heated moments, we wouldn't have moments like this. Patience from Zo, waiting in the wake. Navi is about to be caught. Oh, there's the sleep, the Zerg. He catches everyone. Oh, this could be a total disaster. Thank you, man. Ravage on everyone. The black hole as well. Light of heaven turns it around. Ravage as well. Stolen by Dendi. Are you kidding me? They turn it around. Four arrows dead. Four Five arrows dead. Chuan trying to survive. Chuan's gonna go down. Okay, so maybe he's not so calm, but you get the point. And it's funny how we can see Chuan get visibly frustrated, ripping out his earbuds to vent to the team almost immediately after the play. Not only was Dendi a master of positioning, but an aggressive demon too. For example, let's look at Game 3 of Navi's upper bracket match against LGD, where Dendi carefully positions outside the range of the Ravage. He then steals it, blinks into Chronosphere, where he then makes one of the hypest plays of the tournament. Let's watch it with the crowd's reaction so we can grasp how crazy this was. Here we go, Puppy. There's the blink in and the hex on him. Scream. They gotta get the damage. Backing him back in again. Tornado's gonna set up Quad Baldy. Gonna go through Puppy, but the Roar is keeping him alive with a heal and a boss jumped in with the element. DDC. He does the Ravage. He's just saving him a little bit and then he steals Ravage. Then he returns the Ravage. Right into LGD. Asadra uh, bring down DD with a pulse. The trial put him back into the wall. And that will be DD. Going down high. Shall we pull back in? And he goes down.
Club. Now, although Navi were unable to secure their second TI victory, Dendi would continue to secure his era of dominance, helping his team win 7 out of the 14 Tier 1 events between TI2 and TI3. Going into TI3, we can see that Dendi and the gang were not playing around, finishing the group stage with an 11-3 record. The TI3 playoffs had Dendi channeling his inner GOAT, as his first matchup would be against Team Orange. Although Orange had one of the best players in the world, Mushi, on the squad, it didn't stop Dendi's puck from giving the fans an absolute masterclass, ending Game 2 with a 10, 3, and 15 scoreline, along with the highest damage in the game. And Team Orange made the mistake of not respect banning Dendi's puck in Game 3, which led to a repeat of last game, as Dendi would once again have the highest damage of any hero, finishing the game with 8 kills, 2 deaths, and 16 assists. Now I'm sure you all recognize Navi's next series for one special reason, and this time, I'll let the clip do the talking. Tongfu is going to continue to push. They're not done. Mech still hasn't even been used. There's a hook. How? Brought all the way back to the base. Cleaned up by the fountain. Bro really alted like it was gonna do something. Like, buddy, let's not get it twisted. You're in the fountain. Now, you could be like Loda and think... But if you ask me, I admire Dendi and Puppy for even going for a play like this. I mean, think about the gamble that they're taking. If Dendi misses the hook and gets sent back to base alone, your team basically becomes more vulnerable than when you shoot someone in Fortnite and they instantly start building a four-star hotel with Wi-Fi. But no matter what your stance on the fountain hook is, I think everyone can agree that it brought us fans one of the craziest clips in Dota 2 history. Going into Grand Finals, Loda would make sure this wouldn't happen to his team, banning Chen in all five games. And I don't see people talk about Game 3 enough, especially when Dendi was playing IO mid. He would go on to lose the lane versus Lone Druid, giving up first blood. But come on folks, let's face it, this matchup sucks for IO. Not to mention he's up against the best Lone Druid player in the world, Admiral Bulldog. I mean seriously, this matchup is worse than the line at the DMV. Ironically, Navi would end up winning this game, with Dendi's final score being 3 kills, 5 deaths, and 16 assists. I was just about to compliment Kuroki when I saw his Dota buff saying, he had 34 games in the past few months. But then I went to his profile and saw that they were all tournament games. And all I'm saying is, he better have a secret Smurf account that we don't know about because the date of his last ranked game on this account makes me want to barf. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck? Jumping into Game 5 of the Grand Finals, we can see that Dendi was hungry for a second TI win, dropping 17 kills with only 2 deaths on his famous TA. And this game could have went either way. I mean, just check out how close Dendi was to getting this Aegis, but instead he got bashed by Roshan, got killed, and ended up giving his godlike streak away to Alliance. Despite getting this huge pickoff, Alliance realized they didn't have to kill Dendi in order to win the game, as S4 would cancel Dendi's TP on multiple occasions when Alliance was pushing Navi base, leading us to moments like these. Puppy's not gonna be back in the base. He's got BKB, but no boots of travel. Oh, Boy, oh, 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 so thank you, CP as well. They are in now huge the fun trouble. Funix put. Now, if they go over the throne, it could be game. Funix down. Alliance are doing it. They need a little more. For those to fall. Throw in jeopardy. There's a glimpse. It could be their last stand. Dendi's back, he's gonna try to focus everybody, but there's so much stuff the hitting on the throne. There's no more clip available. Down to about half HP, a quarter HP. Alliance surrounding from all sides. BKB, they They're want to do it. They're gonna do it. They're the gonna do it. The Alliance wins. The they Alliance. win. Unfortunately for Navi, this is where their empire would start to crumble, as the TI placements only got worse from here, going from a respectable 7th place finish at TI4 to a last place finish at TI5 and TI6. And don't even ask how they did at TI7. Dendi would officially leave Navi on August 10th, 2019, but that didn't stop his love for competing. He now resides in Bay Esports, where he's still pulling off cool and creative plays like this clip here, where he attacks his own sentry ward to stack a camp. What I love about Dendi is his endless demonstration 
demonstration of peace, love, and positivity, especially in the face of challenges and any form of adversity. So thank you for teaching that to me, Dendi. I tip my fedora off to you. You have my endless respect. Before we send off today's video, I just wanted to say that you did a good job today, and I'm proud of the progress you're making. Thank you for continuing to fight off all the battles that you face, especially the ones that you don't talk about. You are enough, and the world is a better place just by your existence, and I think that's pretty cool. Much love, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. I can't believe how much positivity y'all were giving in the last video. It means the world to me. Thank you so much for watching, for enjoying, for existing, and for joining the family. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I love y'all. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.